people believe that testing software needs to be complex, but I need to tell you that there is a way to make it easier. Hi, I'm Kamil and in this video we will look into mocking the test dependencies using the mocks package. Most of the complexity with testing comes from the fact that when we want to test a single module we need to take care of its dependencies as well as dependencies of its dependencies and so on. You wanted a banana but what you got was a gorilla holding the banana in the entire jungle. Back to the problem, we will pick up the Naive Trader module from the Hedgehog project that I implemented here on YouTube. You can find links to the both Cryptobot playlist and its GitHub repository in the description below. In a nutshell, we will focus on testing placing the buy order by the Naive Trader process. To accomplish that, it relies on trade event data sent from the PubSub topic it subscribes to. To place an order, it uses the Binance module and caches its updated state in the Naive Leader process. There is also a fair amount of logging involved using the Logger module. How could we cut off those dependencies? Your initial idea could be to create a dummy implementation for each of those modules that would always return successful result upon receiving any data. Actually, the Binance client module comes from the configuration. We could use the same idea to set up the rest of the dependencies to be environment dependent. Okay, so we are done here. No, not even close. The main issue with our dummy implementation is a lack of flexibility. We could improve it to return different results based on the input values, but we would never be able to define those on a pair test basis. If there would be a package that I could use to mock my dependencies. The mocks allows us to generate modules with the function bodies dynamically defined from the test. But before we will jump into all the benefits of mocking, let's prepare our code to use it. Mm, my back hurts. There is a mix.exs file inside the naive application where we need to add the mocks package into the depths list. Next, inside the Naive Trader module, we need to replace all references to the Naive Leader, Phoenix PubSub, and the Logger. We will define all of them as a module's attributes with values coming from the config. Next, inside the main config file, we need to add the Leader, Logger, and PubSub keys to the application settings. Then, in the test configuration file, we need to define the same keys, just pointing to the dynamically generated MOX modules. Dynamically generated mocks modules? What? The mocks package provides a function to define mocked modules based on behaviors. Behaviors? Okay, there's a catch. What have you expected? The mocks actually relies on behaviors, not on the modules that we would like to mock. But we can deal with this. So what is a behavior? The behavior is a mechanism to ensure that modules define the expected functions. Inside a module, define all the required functions using the callback attributes. In other modules that want to implement the behavior, add the behavior attribute and implement the functions. Behaviors bring compile time verification that modules implemented the required functions. In the perfect world, each package would define its behavior Sadly, none of the modules that the Naive Trader relies on does that. Elixir allows us to define behaviors in a separate module from the implementation, so we will do that for the Logger and the Phoenix PubSub packages. As neither of those third-party modules will implement our behavior, we won't have the compile time guarantees that our behavior module didn't get out of sync from the implementation. On the other hand, we can update the Naive Leader and the Binance Mock modules to implement the behaviors to benefit from the compile time guarantees. Let's create a new file that will hold PubSubs and Logger's behaviors. In the module, we will create two submodules, each defining behavior for one third party package. The PubSub module will define subscribe and broadcast functions together with types for each argument for clarity. The Logger will follow the same pattern with a single callback and message type. We can now create a behavior for the Binance mock module. It will consist of only a single function, as that will be the only function used in the test. As Binance mock is our module, we will implement the behavior giving us compile time verification. The same steps will apply to the naive leader module. We will create a behavior for it and make the module implement it. The final step in the mocks initialization is to instruct it to define mock modules. Inside the test helper of the naive application, we will make sure that the mocks application is started and then use the def mock function to instruct the mocks package to generate mocked modules for us. 
We now have all the pieces in place to write our test. We updated the naive trade there module to use the configuration based modules. Inside the configuration we pointed to the mocked modules. We created the behaviors of modules the trade there depends on and used them to define dynamically mocked modules using the defmock function. Let's create a new trader test script inside the naive application where we will place our unit test. We will start with the basic setup for XUnit, then we will import mocks and enable its global mode. XUnit runs each test as a separate process and the mocks package relies on this to support defining multiple mocked implementations. By default only the test process can call that implementation, as our test will start a new trader process and expect it to call the mocked functions defined by the test process, we will need to enable the global mode to share them. This setup comes with lots of caveats, but we will ignore them for this video. Next we will set up our test to verify on exit. The mock will ensure that all mocked functions have been called before the test process exited. We can now move on to defining our mocked functions. They will become an integral part of our test as they will patternize that our logic is sending the correct values to its dependencies. Let's stop here to figure out what's happening and why we need to send a message from the mock to the test process. Our test starts the naive trader process and it will send a trade event to it to trigger the buying logic. We don't receive any feedback when the trader process finished processing the message. The notify function is the last function called inside the tested callback, which we can mock to create that feedback loop, confirming that the trader process finished processing the trade event. Hello? It's finished now. Okay. Let's finish the rest of the test. We'll start the trader process with the initial state and send a trade event to it. We can then make the test wait until it receives the OK message from our mocked function. Additionally, we will add two helper functions to generate the initial trader state and the trade event. We can finally run our test to see the fruits of our labor in action. To sum up, the main benefits of using the MOX package are that we can test a single module without its dependencies, define custom test dependent logic, pattern match exact values like numbers expected to be passed to dependent modules, easily test failure conditions, verify that functions have been called. If you like this episode, now you need to watch those to figure out how we got here. Mox, mox, ah!